Sup, 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 my name is Ryu for the Yu-Gi-Oh! Council, and this is the next meta. Now, I would have had stock market out today if this video actually goes out in time, because I'm not even sure if my internet will be back up and running. It's down, because my internet service provider is an asshole! So, I'm doing this just to kill time. So, let's talk about Black Wings. Like we talked about last week, we were going to talk about this week of Black Wings. Will they be able to top? Will they go for glory? I kind of stole that from Super Smash, I ain't got a lot of you. But in all honesty, can Black Wings become Tier 1 again? That is the biggest question on, well, if you play Black Wings, that's on your mind, because it's on mine. They have everything that defines a Tier 1 deck to a certain extent. Keyword, certain extent. They have the, I can set five back rows, I have my own Heavy Storm which causes you to lose massive advantage. I have surge power, I have powerful monsters, I have access to an extra deck that I can use exceeds and synchros with. I'm not really harmed by Shadow and Prison Mirror that, ma that badly. I'm not really harmed by freaking Skill Drain. Oh, did I mention we have Vicarus Attack and we can main deck Raigeki and Dark Hole and we have a Black Sonic that's like a deep prison if you choose to run it? And we can still run deep prison? God damn, the deck has everything to run, you must be saying. Well, here's the thing why they probably won't top. Because I have to talk to pros, the cons, the middle. The biggest thing holding Black Wings back is that all these newer decks, Satella Knights, um, Burning Abyss, and Shadals, the big three right now, are they all gain advantage a hell of a lot faster. They bring out cards that can stop Black Wings pretty hard. Now, Satella Knights are not fully up there. They're kind of just like very little up there. If we look at the past YCS from this weekend, they weren't really showing as much. Now, plants were nowhere to be found. Black Wings were nowhere to be found. Let's look at why. Mainly because Vandy's emptiness is ran at three. But Black Wings don't have to special as much, you may say. You know, we have that 1800 beater. We're like fucking Bujin. The thing is, though, is that Bujin at the end phase can take their crane out of their deck. We have to use our normal summon. And when we have to use our normal summon off a Black Whirlwind, that's going to affect the game state for us. And when I say it affects the game state for us, and talking as a Black Wing player, it creates a harder situation to go, and go into the game and create this game state where you're able to take control. It's going to be very hard. Don't draw on your Black Whirlwind, you're going to lose advantage faster. Shed Dolls don't give a fuck. They have things that can go into the graveyard off Mathematician, Armageddon Knight, Phoenix Wind Blast. They don't give a shit. They just get pluses for days. Shed Doll Fusion gives them a plus. When their Fusion dies, they get a plus. Burning Abyss, don't even get me started. You already know my standpoint on how Burning Abyss work. Where if they go to the graveyard, they get fat. They go to the graveyard, they get search. The Mathematician, they get Surge. Mathematician, honestly, is one of the most defiant cards of this upcoming format, which is something we'll be having coming over the weekend, hopefully, as long as my internet's up and running, that we'll have a video talking about the top five greatest impact cards for this upcoming format and why I think you should give a shit about them. Pretty much. It's going to be like a 10-minute discussion video for you. So, at this point, you're probably saying, well, things are fucked for Black Wings. They're really not. They run great as an anti-meta deck. And some of you are going, Ryu, they're not really anti-meta. That's perfectly fine. They have the flexibility to become one in the same light that they can basically become a rogue deck that no one's going to really expect coming because it's freaking Black Wings. I mean, come on. If you're a Shed Doll player, last thing on your mind, top tables is going to be Black Wings. Now, we're not talking locals. We're talking regionals, YCS, and... Just a great big meta pool of worlds. As a Shed Doll player, you're not really going to give a second thought about Black Wings in all honesty because you're going to focus on that Shed Doll matchup or that Burning Abyss. Those are your two greatest matchups to focus on in a side deck, at least in my perspective. You're not going to focus on Black Wings or Monarchs or things that really don't matter to you as much because they're just tier 2 status. But that tier 2 status can instantly become a rogue deck, and that rogue deck could just, well, get in there and actually win. Because the player was ready for your deck, and they played better. 
Now, the biggest weakness, and I said this um, when I built my Blackwing deck, and why I just don't like Black Sonic in general. We all have those cards we don't like. I know some of you are like screaming at you. Why do you like Black Sonic? Here's the thing. If, and I know I'm, I'm going to have a bad example here because you got to remember Mikey wasn't using standard Black Wings in that dual video. It was tacked out. I didn't know what the fuck to expect next. In all honesty, I did not see the Black Sonic coming. But had it been normal Black Wings and not been Mikey's, Mikey's a little crazy when it comes to his builds. I think we could all agree on that. It's not hate against Mikey, that's actually a compliment. Because he's different, I like different. So, here's the thing. If your opponent has Shura on board, and doesn't go for Kalut, you know, doesn't have the Black Ruin, and has like three set cards, you make sure you're not running into that unless you have Lance or some shit to negate it. Some wiretap or something, because you're afraid of Black Sonic. And in all honesty, some of you are probably going, well that's a bad mindset, just force it out. What if I swarm the board and have a big exceed that I really want to use and cause pressure to my opponent where they can't get over that easy? And I have a deep prison face down, so I'm not really worried about the collude. In that situation, you don't want to do it, hence why it makes it a little predictable. We all know how to do with Black Wings at this point. Konami just wants us to just say, We like Black Wings! Give them a free prints! Do, 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 money, 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 you know, kind of thing. I honestly believe I could say if Gale was at three, and Dark Strike Fighter with Arata, with Arata, was legal, they still would not be able to top. I'm gonna to be ballsy when I say that. Every deck is main decking Vanny Semtinus that seems to top. That's pretty much now a standard in this game. Pretty much every deck that's gonna to top, deck that's gonna to top, is mathematician based. A lot of that seems to be that way, hence the Tele Knights, even though they have, you know, just these great cards that are making them a thing, they're not really doing anything besides just getting top tables, top tables, top tables in low numbers. They're not getting there in those higher numbers. And Black Wings are kind of just under Satella Knights. So if those two decks got pushed up, and keep in mind, we're not even talking about next challengers, which we're gonna to get to in a minute. Keep in mind that if you push those out and Satella Knights take a place, then you still have to deal with plants. So you have to deal with the rogue decks that may pop up. Hell is even Monarchs. Now some of you are going, Monarchs? Really are you? Monarchs have a great matchup with everything across the board. That's just true. Now post new challengers, sorry, next challengers is OCG. Post new challengers, there is the the paper clips. I someone of my subscribers told me that. Um, it's the Aquila Hawks. Now, the Aquila Hawks, as I say it's a butcher to hell. In all honesty, <laughs> the Quilla Hops have so much searching power and just everything to dominate a game because they're really freaking quick and they're just hard to know what's coming next unless you study the matchup. And that's why I'm studying the matchup myself for Guy to Your Side. But that's another video of another day. You have that to contend with. You have support that we have no idea what the fuck it's fully going to be for Burning Abyss. You also have Shadol's getting a small boost. So, three decks that Black Wings would have to contend with. And you could decide for all three what happens when you run into Satellite Knights and you're not ready for Satellite Knights. That match screws you over. What happens to running Plats? You can't be siding against five different fucking decks and think that Black Wings are going to be tier one. So, it's kind of that mindset. I personally would love to see Black Wings back at top tables because I love Black Wings. And I know there's people out there who are just like, Fuck Black Wings, man! They suck! They're the worst design deck ever! Blah, blah, blah! And I know, like, there's a majority of you that would say Dragon Rulers or Six Samurai or Insectors. And I'll be honest, two of those three, I hate them. Not even gonna lie. I'll let you figure out which two I hate. But I honestly gotta hate them. But would I get mad if they were top tables? No, I get ready to side for them. But Black Wings in this format will not be tier 1 status because they lack the one thing that all other decks currently have. It is called the momentum game. That's what I like to phrase it as. And to wrap and sum up this video when I say momentum game, it's a really quick gain advantage where you gain advantage quickly onto the board in any situation and come out of most situations. Keyword be most. The one thing, however, that Black Wings Still get a benefit from 
and why they could possibly in the future be tier one is if Konami takes D Prison, uh, D Prison, sorry, D Fissure and Macro off the ban list with Soldiering, then you may have a tier one Blackwing deck. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to rate, comment, and if you're new to the channel and enjoy the video, subscribe. Now, that's the next meta. I will see you next week for more The Next Meta. And next week, we're going to talk about something I don't know what yet, but we will get to it probably another deck or something along those lines. I don't know. Ever shifting meta or plays. I, I'm going to decide on it and I'll get back to you guys. So, anyway, thank you for watching. I'm ready for the Year Council. I'll see you next video. Peace.